In this class, we'll see how we can debug a Java program. Okay, so here I have a Java program, and I'm going to show you how we can debug this program. The first thing that you do when when you want to debug a program is to put some breakpoints in the program. Let's say I want to stop in the very first line of main. So I go to the first line of main, and I, I double click right next to the line number, and once I put the breakpoint, you see a small blue circle. So this is called as creating the breakpoint. I can double click on that and the breakpoint gets deleted. Or what I can do is I can create a breakpoint and then I can right click there and then I can disable that breakpoint. So if a breakpoint is disabled, the program will not stop there. So it's like a toggle. So I can enable that breakpoint again. Okay. Now let's run this program under the debugger. So you say debug as a Java application. So this kind of a launch will open the debug perspective. So Eclipse has a perspective for debugging programs. That's a debug perspective. You can say yes here and you can also say remember my decision. So every time when you want to debug a program, you don't this you don't have to answer yes or no. So I'll say yes, and then it will start the program in the debug perspective. So in the debug perspective, you'll see several windows. Here you can control the debugger in this window, the debug window. Here you can see all the variables and the breakpoints. Okay, so now I have several breakpoints in my code. I'm going to remove those ones. Or what I can do is I can even uh, delete them I can right click on them and say remove because this is not the program that I'm debugging I'm only interested in my code so I have a debugger and as soon as I launch the program it comes and stops here see this arrow that you see here it indicates where the program is currently stopped so at this point of time I should be able to inspect all the variables that are available at that point in the code. For example, this J, it has not come to that point. So J is not yet available. So it will show you all the variables which are in scope at that time. So what are the variables which are available till that time? The program has just started executing. It has entered the main program. So this R, which is a parameter to main, should be available. So if you go to the variable section here, you should be able to see arcs. And if you see here, this arcs has a length of zero. That is because I did not pass any arguments. Right? And then if you see the buttons here, this is step into, this is step over, and this is terminate the program, and this is to continue. So let's say I put a breakpoint here and I and I say continue so what I expect is the program to continue executing all the lines from this breakpoint to the next breakpoint so I'll hit the con uh, resume button resume or continue is the same thing and I would expect it to stop at line 52 so I'm going to hit that but if you see that it did not come to line 52 actually it went and terminated the program Actually, it finished executing the program. The reason is I did not pass any arguments to the program. So what happened was this args dot length was zero, so it never entered into the for loop, and it never came to this breakpoint, which is inside the for loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass some arguments to this program. So what we can do is you can go to this debug window here and open the debug dialog. And in the debug dialog, I'm going to pass some arguments to it. Apply. In the run window, this button will be called as run. In the debug window, it will be debug. So I'm going to say debug.
and now the program will again come and stop at the first breakpoint in your program and the only variable available at this point of time is args and now you can see that args has two elements in it so you'll see an args 0 and an args 1 Arc 0 is a string 235 and arc 1 is a string 6935 right so now what I'll do is I can do a step over step over means it will go from line 49 to line 50 okay since it, since it has finished executing line 49 this variable DDR is now available the DDR is a variable of type demo digit range right see that tdr is of type demo digit range it's an object of demo digit range and now if you see the arrow here points to this highlighted line the highlighted line is a line that it is about to execute it has not finished executing that line if you do a step over it will finish executing the line so what it will do at this point of time it will initialize j to 0 see j is still not available here but when I do a step over, J will be available to inspect over here because J becomes alive at that point of time. Only after finishing, ex after the line 50 is executed. So I'll do a step over. So the first value of J that you should see is J equal to 0. If I do a step over. Whereas if I do a continue, it will not go to line 51, but it will go to line 52 and stop. So let me do a step over and you'll see that it will go to line 51. And at this point of time, you should be able to see what J is. J is 0. I'll do a step over again. It will go to the next line. And now number passed is a string called 235, which is the first one, because J is 0, right? Arc 0 is the first element, which is 235. That's what we passed, right? We passed 235 and 6935. So for arc 0, the first value is... 235 and that is a string and for a string you will see double quotes now this it hasn't finished executing this line so range is not yet available but if I do a step over I should be able to see the range now the range for this is 4 because 5 minus 2 is 3 plus 1 is 4 so it finished executing this whole method and range is now 4 but here you see the console there is no output here because it hasn't finished executing this line now if I do a step over it will finish executing that line and go to the next iteration of the loop when j becomes 1 but let's say so if I do a step over see now it has printed the range which is 4 and now range has again disappeared from here because the range is a local variable to this block so the, this block is again about to start. So what it will do is, the range is out of scope now. Now j, if I step over this, j will become 1 because it will execute plus plus j. So j will become 1. Now if you see the number passed, let me execute that line. And number passed becomes the second argument. Because args 1 is 6935. At this point of time, if I want to debug this method, instead of doing a step over, I can do a step into. Step over means to finish executing the line even if it has a method on it. Step into means to go into the line if it has a method call in it. So I'll step into it and now it will enter the first line of that method. First uncommented line of that method and I can debug all the debug the lines here as well so it is currently on line number 22 it hasn't executed it I'll do a step over and I can see what the first character is so the first character of 6935 is 6 and the min and max will now be assigned min is 6 and max is 6 now I execute over this loop and find the min and max and at the very end I can see the range so I'll put a breakpoint on line 36 and I'll say resume so it'll come to line number 36 
it hasn't finished executing that but I can see that the min and max are 3 and 9 and if I step over it will calculate the range so the range is 9 minus 3 plus 1 which is 7 and it will return that range so if I do a step over it will come back to the point from where it was executing it and now if I do a step over on that now range will be set to 7 and if I do a step over it will print the value of, of that range now j has become 1 now if I do a step over j becomes 2 which is more than args dot length args dot length is 2 and 2 is equal to 2 it is not less than 2 it will execute go into the loop only if it is less if it is equal to it will come out of the loop so if I do a step over it comes to the end of the main method and if I do a step over it finish execute it terminates the code so the main thing in a debugger is so let's review what a debugger does so a bug is a logical error in your program and debug is the process of finding what that error is and fixing it and debugger is a tool which helps a developer to debug a problem code code which, which can contain a logical error in Eclipse provides a debugger in, inbuilt into it it's the Eclipse debugger and in, inside Eclipse you can start debugging the program you can control the flow of execution as the program moves from one line to the next and you can create breakpoints and at each breakpoint you can inspect the values of the variables and see how they change as the program runs and the Eclipse debugger allows you to stop the program and inspect the values. So the, the main debugging steps are you should be able to start the program in a debug mode. You should be able to stop the program at certain points. Those points are called as breakpoints. So you should be able to create breakpoints, delete breakpoints. You, can, you should be able to enable and disable them as well. So a breakpoint is nothing but a certain line in your program an uncommented line of your program where you can where the program can stop where the program can potentially stop if you put a breakpoint it will stop there and at breakpoints you should be able to inspect variables evaluate expressions and so on and you should be able to continue your program continue or resume your program from one breakpoint to another and if a certain line contains a method invocation you should be able to step into the method or you should be able to step out of the method and once you are in, inside a method you should be able to step over the method as well that means come out of the method and if you have like several method calls it will create a stack trace of methods and you should be able to pop to a, pop up to any method in the stack trace and finally you should be able to stop the debugger as well so this is how a debugger works and we have seen an example of how to launch a program within a debugger